Hi, my name's Tom Herbert and I'm a fifth generation baker. My family business, Hobbs House Bakery, have built up a great reputation for our award-winning breads. But I believe anybody can bake great bread at home. And I want to show you how to make the most almighty of loaves, sourdough bread. I've got my brother Henry Herbert here. He's a chef. I think the sourdough is the king of breads and I think it sits majestically on any restaurant menu. I'm going to show you some great things to do with it. In order to bake at home, there's just a few bits of kit you've got to have, and they are... An oven. Any oven will do, but if it will fire up to 230 degrees, then that's going to be perfect for baking. Next, you'll need a baking stone. They look like this, otherwise known as pizza stones or baking tile. That'll help to keep the heat in your oven. A good quality mixer like this will take some of the effort out of home baking, but if you don't have one, then a simple mixing bowl like this would be just fine. A decent pair of digital scales are really helpful for weighing up your dough. A scraper is an essential bit of baking kit. You'll also need some cling film. You'll also need a water sprayer. You'll definitely want a proving basket. A sharp knife is crucial. You'll definitely need a decent pair of oven gloves. Right, that's all the kit. Let's get baking. Sourdough is just a blend of flour and water that harbour and feed yeasts that are in the air around us. Looking after sourdough might sound daunting, but it couldn't be simpler. You're going to start with 225 grams of sourdough in your jar. And 12 hours before you start making your bread, you need to feed it 75 millilitres of warm water, 75 grams of wholemeal flour, weighed directly into the jar and given a mix. Right then, let's feed the sourdough. In goes 75 grams of warm water and 75 grams of wholemeal flour. By mixing fresh ingredients into the sourdough, the airborne yeasts will be feeding and exhaling. And if we can capture the carbon dioxide that they give off, into a great stretchy dough. It'll rise up an almighty king of loaves. Now we've fed the sourdough. I need to leave it for 12 hours to do its thing. This recipe will make one big sourdough and it'll keep for up to a week. You'll need 460 grams of strong white flour. Then you'll need 300 grams of lively sourdough. Ten grams of sea salt. Good sea salt and 230 millilitres of warm water. I'm going to weigh all the ingredients directly into the bowl. So, first, I need 460 grams of strong white flour. Now we need 300 grams of this lovely, lively sourdough. It's full of little air bubbles and what I want to do is get them into my dough. 
And when it mixes in with the flour, it's going to be getting an almighty feed and that will get the yeast really excited. It will be exhaling loads of carbon dioxide. I just need to make a stretchy enough dough. 10 grams of sea salt. That will bring out the flavour. And last but not least, 230 millilitres of warm water. One gram is exactly the same as one milliliter. So I can actually weigh 230 grams. That's how I can get this super accurate. With your scraper, you just need to slowly and gently incorporate the ingredients. You can really smell the sourdough coming out of the bowl. After you've done that for about a minute, and once all the ingredients have come together, then just take it out and work it on the dough table. And then using the heel of your hand and the whole of your body, you just need to lean into the dough, push it across the table. And with each movement, pick it up off the table and bring it back. And what you're doing is strengthening the dough. This increases its elasticity, which will help hold in those precious yeasty exhalations that will rise up your almighty king of loaves. And don't be tempted to dust the table with flour. As you work this dough, it will become easier and easier to handle. And you need to do this for about 10 minutes until your dough is really stretchy, work really hard. And if you get tired of using one hand, switch and use the other. And if you have a mixer, well, why not use that? Ten minutes there would be ready for its first rise. Great, well that's looking done. It's a very soft dough, but it's not unmanageable. When you finish working it, you should have a beautiful soft dough like this that your hand doesn't stick to. And if you get it this stretchy, you know it's going to be good. So I'm going to put the dough back into the bowl and give it its first rise. This is a really slow, gentle process, so I'm not going to wait for this to double in size. Just half an hour to relax the dough. I'm going to cover it with cling film to make sure that the dough doesn't dry out and leave it somewhere warm for its first rise. The sourdough's had its first rise, so we're going to mould it and give it a second rise in a proving basket. What a beautiful dough. It's really soft but not sticky. Just a light dusting of flour to stop the dough sticking. Now I'm going to stretch it out really gently into a rectangular shape. I need to mould this loaf so it fits in the basket. And moulding the loaf is really straightforward. Once you've stretched it out into this shape, mark it in three, fold it over one third, and then another third, like that. Now I'm going to use my knuckles to create a seam. By pushing down quite firmly, on the edge nearest to me. I'm joining those three bits of dough together. Then, using my thumbs and fingers, I'm going to roll the dough piece towards me. Rolling it towards me and sticking the dough down with my thumbs all the way to the bottom where we meet the seam. There's the seam and crucially, the seam needs to be on top when it goes in the basket for its second and final rise. Now we need a good handful of flour to dust the basket. And finally, a sprinkling of flour on the dough piece to make sure that this loaf doesn't stick to the basket. Seam side up and ready to rise. And you need to cover the basket with a piece of cling film to stop your sourdough from drying out and leave it overnight to double in size.
The sourdough's been resting about 12 hours and it's ready to bake. So now I'm going to need my water sprayer to get some humidity into the oven. A very sharp knife and my oven is preheated to 230 degrees. I've heated the baking stone through as well and the sourdough loaf is going to be baked directly onto that. That will give it a jump up from the sole of the oven. You'll get a beautiful shape and a really perfect crust. So you know that your sourdough is ready to bake when it's doubled in size and you can see here that the crest of the loaf has risen above the sides of the basket. It's ready to go in. So now you need to tease the loaf out of the basket directly onto the baking stone and then with the sharp knife mark it a couple of times. And then finally get some water from your sprayer into the oven. Increasing the humidity will help to give you a really great crust that will seal the moisture in and help this loaf to keep for days and days and days. And not only that, you'll get beautiful golden colour and a lovely shine on your loaf. The loaf's had half an hour in the oven. Let's see how it's doing. And there it is. What an amazing smell. That's the thing that strikes me first. And look at that beautiful golden crust and how it's jumped off, off the sole of the oven. If you tap it, it sounds hollow, you know it's baked. That's a really great loaf and you can make one too. So we've got the baked off sourdough here, which we're going to make into some cheese toasties. So I've got a hard mature cheddar, a nice creamy blue cheese, about 30% blue, the rest cheddar, and then a little bit of raw onion diced up as fine as you can, mixed through. And these are going to make some delicious toasties. So we just mix the cheese and the onion together. So I'm just going to stuff it with cheese now. I'm going to pop the lid on and that toast is ready to be baked in the flat top and that's going to be delicious. Look at these beautiful cheese toasters. They smell amazing and their simplicity itself. Just really strong cheese, great sourdough. They're going to taste beautiful.